All right. Not that I don't mind helping all of you, but because this is a challenge problem um, in your homework, I thought I would go ahead and make a video just walking you through each step and what I, what we're doing and and why. And so this is the challenge problem on 13 point C should be problem number 10. Um, I felt that this was less of a challenge than some of the other problems that they say weren't challenge problems. So here goes. We have three different shapes, right? We're wanting to find the surface area. Where's my pen? There it is. No, go back. We're wanting to find the surface area of the solid where the cone and it, then it's telling us the cone's hollow. So where this cone is, uh, we could turn the object upside down and hold something in it. It's hollow. So that means that when we're finding surface area, we need to technically find the inside of that cone because that is surface for our shape. Uh, and then we're going to round to the nearest whole number. So those are things that we need. Um, just first, we need to decide what three shapes do we have here. So um, we have a hemisphere, right, um, which means half a sphere. We have a cylinder. Whoa, bring that back. Cylinder, and then we have a cone. It even tells us we have a cone, right? We can't forget that one. So we have three different shapes, which means we need the formula for three, all three of those. So here's the thing. Surface area of a hemisphere is going to be half the surface area of a sphere. So if the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, divide that in half, and we got our hemisphere, which would be the same as 2 pi r squared. And so that's what we're going to be working with for hemisphere. Our cylinder surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r height. And our surface area for the cone is pi r squared plus pi r slant height. And yes, the more and more you work with these, the more they just kind of get ingrained. I did provide you with a formula sheet at the back of your packet to make it easier so you don't have to go looking for your formulas everywhere. They're all on one page. The other thing we need to do before I start just throwing, you know, jumping in is I've got to decide. We already know that it's a hemisphere, so we already divided the sphere in half. But when I think of my cylinder, I've got to think, am I using both bases? Am I using just one base? Am I using no bases? And so when we think about it here, the circle for the cone, it's already telling us this is hollow. So this base isn't going to count. And then the top base is being covered by the sphere, the hemisphere. So we don't need our bases. We're just going to be using the lateral area of the cylinder. So we're just needing this back half here because we just need that. No, that lateral area. And then when we think of the cone again, we're not going to use that base. That base is a hole. It's not part of the surface. We, again, are just needing that lateral area of the cone. Why should we set this up or think about this before we jump in? The reason is, is so that we don't do these, the entire formula and then realize, oh, well, I need to take off two of the circles or three of the circles. If we think about it ahead of time, then I can set up a formula saying that I need to take the hemisphere, which is 2 pi r squared, plus the lateral area of the cylinder, so 2 pi r r h, plus the lateral area of a cone, pi r slant height. Why? Here it is. This is, this is going to give me my surface area. I could plug into that and chug, or I can break it into three separate parts. I'm going to break it into three separate parts. But let's talk about what we know and what we don't know. Starting with radius. I have that the diameter is 4, right? The diameter is 2 of my radius. So I'm going to take 4 divided by 2, and I'm going to get that my radius is 2 meters. I also know my height. My height is 11 meters. 
Uh, well, so radius, radius and height, radius and, oh, uh, slant height. We do not know the slant height. So we need to find the slant height. And we're going to find the slant height by doing Pythagorean theorem, right? This creates a right triangle. We know that this one is 2, and obviously this one's 11. So to find my slant height, I'm going to do 2 squared plus 11 squared equals c squared. So we're going to have 4 plus 121 equals c squared. So 4 plus 121 is 125. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. And so my slant height, I'm you could approximate the decimal and that's fine. I am going to leave it like we did in our example as for now the square root of 125 until I have to actually use it in the problem. All right. From here, I'm just going to plug. I'm going to find each individual and then combine them at the end. Or if you would like, you can do it all like we had talked about up here. But we're going to start, I'm going to start with that hemisphere. And so for the, because in my opinion, it's the easiest one. Uh, for the hemisphere, we're doing 2 pi, our radius, so 2 squared. And so... 2 squared is 4, and f so I'll just go ahead and write it. So we have 2 times 4 times pi. So then that would give us 8 pi. And 8 pi is approximately 25.12. All right, now I'm going to find for my cylinder. Volume of the cylinder. Well, not volume. I'm silly me. We're finding surface area, but we already talked that we were wanting the lateral area, right? The lateral area for our cylinder is going to be 2 pi times our radius, which is 2 times the height, which is 11. So then I'm going to take 2 times 2, well, 2 times 11, so we're going to have 2 times 22. It doesn't matter. 2 times 2 and then times 11. 2 times 11, either way. And then 2 times 2, which is 44. And then 44 times 3.14, which gives us approximately 138.16. All right, so all of these so far are meters squared. Last one, our cone. The lateral area of our cone, which is going to equal pi times our radius, which is 2, times our slant height, which is the square root of 125. And then I plug all of that into the calculator as it is. Best if you use it with parentheses. Um, 3.14 for pi. And I get approximately 70.21. And then I'm going to take these three. Okay, meters squared. I put it on all the others, but not that one. And I'm going to add them together like we talked about up here. Because it's our surface area is added together. So we're going to do 25.12 plus 138.16 plus 70.21. And I add them all together in my handy dandy calculator and we get 233.49 um, meters squared. Now, it says nearest whole number, so I would say approximately 230, because you got to look at the tenths. I know the nine could round the four to a five, and then, but we got to look at the tenths to decide the ones place. So, 2233 meters squared is the approximate surface area of this problem. So, those are just things you have to think about. When it co comes to finding surface area, if it's a, a cylinder with another cylinder cut out and you're finding surface area, then you have to find the surface area of the lateral area of the big cone and the surface area of the lateral area of the smaller or cone, smaller cylinder and big cylinder. And then you would add those together. If it's volume, you'd have to subtract. It's just you got to think about what's going on. So... Uh, again, if you need help beyond this, but this kind of takes you step by step through that challenge problem. Um, 
with the explanation and not just looking at what Math Excel gives you and still questioning how they got what they got. So, until next time.